God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon de Marie. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Today is Palm Sunday. So we praise the Lord for today. Our message title today is Quiet Time with God. And this will be part one in our series. Psalm 46 and 10 reads from the King James Version. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Bible basic English renders it. Be at peace in the knowledge that I am God. I will be lifted up among the nations, honored through all the earth. So my beloved, this psalm encourages us to hope and trust in God all the time, but especially in times of adversity, because he has all the power and divine providence and is graciously present at all times. He is always present in the church and understand that we as Christians are the church. So he is with us at all times. If we look at the First Testament church, we see that they suffered adversity, but God was always with them. When I say the First Testament church, I mean the, the first church of the New Testament. God reveals his glory through his power and his faithfulness. And as we look back in our lives, we can see the presence of God in our lives, all through our lives. But we can especially notice it in times of adversity. Amen. Because that's when we notice whether God is there or not. Now, he's with us all the time, but we especially pay attention in times of adversity because most of the time we pray and seek God when we're having problems. But he is always there with us because he said he will never leave us, nor will he forsake us. Amen. So just as a matter of principle, seek God every day. Early in the morning, seek him. Seek him for everything that you need. Acknowledge his presence in your life, not just in times of adversity. All the time, and your thought process will change, and your relationship with God through Jesus Christ will change in the process. Now, we're going to open up with Psalm 46 and verse 1, which reads, firstly, from the King James Version, to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. The contemporary version renders it a special song for the people of Korah and for the music leader. God is our mighty fortress, always ready to help in times of trouble. Remember the praise to God written by Martin Luther. A mighty fortress is our God. Amen? Amen. When we deal with God as our refuge and strength, that is Christ, who is God as well as man, is our refuge for souls to fly unto for safety. As for sensible sinners in a view of danger, wrath, and misery, so for saints in every time of distress, typified by like the cities of refuge under the legal dispensation of the law. Under the law, if you did something wrong, you can go to a city of refuge and not be harmed. But once you stepped out of that city of refuge, you were subject to the punishment. Now, the high priest would put that sentence upon you. And if you went to a city of refuge, you could not leave until the death of that high priest. Then you could be free again. But if you left, you could be killed or you could be charged with that crime. Understand that we as Christians should use Christ as our refuge. We should always endeavor to have a relationship with him spiritually, that we may grow spiritually. And know that when you seek God, you must also wait patiently for him to react to your prayers. Get rid of the mindset that you have now of this thought process that you want instantaneous results because they don't always come instantly. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait upon the Lord. Continue to pray it's not just like one time you say this prayer, this prayer that uh, everybody's praying. In my time and years of ministry, I've heard many different ways to pray, words to use. If you use this word, then your prayer is definitely going to be answered. Just believe and go on. No, continue to seek God. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Don't give up asking, seeking, or knocking until your answer comes. It may come at the moment. It may come hours later. It may come a week later, a month later, years later. But the answer will come. Amen. So have faith. My beloved, God wants to hear from you. And don't just say any old prayer because know that you can't fool God. He knows your thoughts and your intents. He knows why you are praying. And he also knows the results for a certain period of time to answer them. He knows the end result. A lot of times he doesn't answer the prayer at that certain time because he knows 
Something is going to happen if he does. He has a reason for not answering your prayers immediately. See, God wants to have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. He wants a personal relationship. That's why we say Jesus Christ is our personal Savior and Lord. He's my personal Savior and Lord. If you have accepted him, he is your personal Savior. Savior and Lord. It is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't get to heaven if he isn't my Savior and Lord. I can't get to heaven because I'm married to my wife and he is her personal Savior and Lord. I can't get to heaven on that. He must be my personal Savior and Lord. We must never forget that Christ ever lives to intercede for us. So we must ask him in faith, believing that we will receive an answer to our prayers. But remember, as I said earlier, it is in his time that he answers. So my beloved, salvation is only through Jesus Christ. You can't get to heaven any other way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody enters into the presence of the Father except through me. Think about that today. So knowing that he is a present help in a time of trouble, whether we have inward problems or outward problems, whether we have psychological problems, mental problems, ailment problems, problems with our family members, our jobs, or other people around us, God is able to remedy the situation. He is able to heal. Understand that we serve a God of seasons also. We have seasons, and we preach for, I don't know, I forget how many weeks, on Ecclesiastes chapter 2. And we made mention of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It's a time and a season for everything under the sun. Amen. So my beloved, God works in seasons. He can work immediately, or he can work in time. He knows what we're going to do before we even do it. He's God. He knows the past, present, and future. He doesn't forget the past. He knows the present, and for sure he knows the future because he's God. We try to limit God. Well, God won't know. Here's my real reason for why I want this, but I'm not going to tell God in my prayer. You don't have to tell God in your prayers. He already knows. That's why we don't receive a lot of things from God, because we ask for the wrong motives. But how easy it is for man to forget the goodness of God. How soon we forget. It's like God will do something one day, The next day we wanted to do something and he doesn't do it. We get angry with God. It's like we were praying for somebody to to be healed. So we saw healing results. We're praising God. Yes, praise God for the healing. Next thing you know, something else goes wrong. We pray for healing and they don't get healed and they die. We forget about the good that God did and we get mad at him because he didn't do it this time. For that, for the same person or for another person. We can't tell God what to do. Why don't we listen to what God says? God says, thou shalt not commit adultery. You commit adultery, there's something of consequence. Thou shalt not steal, you steal. Paul deals with that too. What kind of testimony do you have? See, all the good that you do, you do one thing bad, and that's what people are going to remember. They're going to remember the bad you did. Well, some preacher he is, or this or that, or some minister he is, or some Christian he is, or whatever. People judge the whole congregation by the pastor, do they not? If the pastor falls, guess what? Something wrong with God. Something's wrong with every Christian. They're all the same. They're, they're fakers or they're fanatics or whatever. They're full of get-rich schemes. I'm not saying a lot of them aren't. But a true minister of God walks by faith, not by sight. He honors God. He will not in any way decrease the name of God through anything, anything that is sinful. You know that the God that made the heavens and the earth is able to presently and speedily and effectually meet your need. God is never shy in his blessings, but we must be thankful. God had problems dealing with the Hebrews because they were murmuring. A lot of the Hebrews, they thought a whole generation died that rebelled against God. And it wasn't until that next generation came where they could enter into the promised land, into the land of milk and honey. All that Moses did, just think about this. All that Moses did, the obedience. That one time he was disobedient to God, he wasn't allowed to go into the promised land. He can look from afar and watch them all cross and Joshua take them in, but he couldn't go. Because he disobeyed God. Now that's under the law. How many times do we disobey God? God keeps his promises, but it's in his time. So we don't have to remind God because God does forget. We need to continue to declare the things that God has said he will do for you. Lord, you said you will go before me and prepare the way. Speak to God. Let him know that you know what he said and you're going to stand 
on the, his word. Now, again, if you do something wrong, that word is still there. He says, if you do this, then I'm going to do it. If you sin, you're going to suffer this. That holds true, too. You do things good, you get good. You do things bad, you get bad back. Drive to be perfected in the things of God, that you will receive the blessings that God has stored up for you. Amen? Amen. Let's move right along to Psalm 46 and verse 2. First of all, for the King James Version, Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. The Good News Bible renders said, That is why we are not afraid, even when the earth quakes or the mountains topple into the depths of the sea. No matter what happens, we are not to fear. Christ is your Savior and Lord. You're trusting in Him. Don't fear what man say they're going to do to you. Always remember that the ultimate purpose in your salvation is to be with Christ forever. No matter what happens to you physically, no matter what happens to you mentally or in any way, if somebody tries to take your life or whatever, or you die for your faith in Christ, the ultimate thing is that you will be with Christ. Christ forever. Never to suffer again. My beloved, God has a plan and a purpose. So don't fear. See, our confidence in God shall be unshaking and abiding. Having him for our refuge and strength, we can have nothing to fear. Don't fear. When man threatens you, if he threatens you on a job and, and says, you can't mention the name of Jesus, you'll get fired, that means nothing. That means nothing. You can't have a Bible here or do this. That means nothing. God is in control. This earth belongs to God and the fullness thereof. Don't worry about what man say to you. If you're on your job, do your job. If the opportunity comes to minister for the Lord, pray with somebody, you do that at the right place at the right time. Never fear man because the power of God supersedes anything that man may attempt to do to you. So remember, your confidence in God shall be unshaken and abiding because the creator of the universe is on your side. He's not on the side of the wicked. He's on the side of the righteous. Then it reads, though the earth be removed, literally, though the earth changes. People have been struck with fear about climate change. God's in control. How many know that the earth works in cycles? And it works in areas. I've been in Texas for 40 years, right? I've seen snow in November, December. I've seen no snow in November, December. I've seen bad snowstorms in February. This year, no snow anywhere in February. The other year we had 50 some inches of rain. Not this year. We had a whole month of rain without stopping. Lakes over flooding. We didn't have it this year. It works in cycles. The earth moves in cycles. It's not climate change. It's always been that way. One thing is for sure that you have the spring rains and the fall rains, but they may come a month early. They may come a month late, but they're going to come. So why should we put God on our timetable? I've seen it where we've had droughts. I've seen it where the rain has been plentiful. I've seen the temperatures 115, 116. I've seen them not go over 100 in the summertime, in July and August. It's a cycle, my beloved. And God is in control of the earth's cycle and everything that happens. Amen. So that's why we don't put our faith in the weatherman. He says, it's going to be sunshiny today. And you look outside, it's raining cat and dog. Well, it's going to rain today, and there's the sun up, and you're sweating, and it's hot. You going to put your faith in the weatherman, or you going to put your faith in God? That's just an example. We should never lose faith in God. And if he allows it to rain, and you think you want to do something, there's a reason for it raining. God has a plan and a purpose for everything that he allows to happen, okay? The idea here is that we shouldn't be afraid of anything. Anything that happens, if there's an earthquake, if there's a storm come, there's a tornado come like we've had, don't fear. If you have a tornado warning, take cover. Pray. Seek God. Remember, as a Christian, no matter what happens to you, should we go with the attitude, well, I'm going to go to heaven, I, I don't care if I die? No. We should care about living. We should care about our families living. We should care about life and treasure every day as a gift from God to which we can live and testify of his goodness. A lot of times people equate evils with God. Remember, we have a devil in this world and the devil never does anything good. He does everything bad. What could the devil try to do to Job to destroy him? When God told him in the beginning, you can't destroy him. In the end, everything that Job suffered, he was blessed by God because he never gave up his faith and trust in God. Remember that God remains our friend and our protector, and we have nothing to fear. So it says, 
and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. This may either be meant to be understood that there's going to be a separation and something or powerful things are going to crumble. You know, 9-11, we saw the Twin Towers crumble. So, and people lost their lives. City was devastated. So, but know that the ones that were responsible for it were dealt with by God. We saw during the Second World War what Nazi Germany did. They ended up in rubbles. God will not allow evil to persist Amen. in this world. Amen? Amen. But he will take care of evil. Although tsunamis come, they go. Hurricanes come, they go. These are temporary things that happen. And a lot of times God uses these things to turn our attention to him. Right. To turn our focus to him. Okay? That we will depend on him. Not depend on our government or depend on those that run our government. Okay? So, praise the Lord for what we covered today. Psalm 40 verses 1 and 2. And then next week we will pick up on Psalm 46 and 3. And then we'll continue to go on until we end. But beloved, the main thing is seeking God in every area of your life. Spending precious time with him. Those that seek him early shall find him. See, the first thing to do in the morning isn't get up and put the coffee pot on. It's to thank God for another day. It's to seek God for the things that he wants you to do during the day. The main thing is to allow God to have control over your life, to submit to him. Allow God to be the ruler of your life. He sent his only begotten son to die for you, to die for the sins of all mankind. And that price has been paid. Now all we have to do is accept it. If you have never made that commitment and would like to do so today, I want to lead you in a prayer. It's called the prayer of repentance. Some people call it the sinner's prayer. But let's call it the prayer of repentance. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, then you have no relationship with God through Jesus Christ, simply put. But if you want one, I want to lead you in a prayer. I can't say the prayer for you, but I can lead you in the right direction. It's like you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force him to drink, as they say. I'm offering it to you. If you want to accept Christ as your Savior and Lord, you must believe that he was sent by God. He was born. He was crucified, died, buried, and rose from the dead on the third day. And he ascended into heaven. He's now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty. If you want to accept him, so if you want to receive Christ today, please pray this prayer with me. Father God, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today, quiet time with God. I've never accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, and I want to do that today. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came into the earth to die for the sins of all mankind. I believe that he was crucified, died, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. There's God sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty, from where he should come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I'm sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins, and I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that through my repentance, I have eternal life. I accept your plan of salvation, repent of my sins, and promise to follow you all the days of my life. Lead me and guide me in the things that you have for me to do. I want to serve you. Open the door for me to tell others about Jesus Christ. Thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I praise you and thank you. Amen. My beloved, as you said that prayer today, I'm going to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, and ask him to pray with you, pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then what else I want you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. That's abundant.grace at att.net. And then what I want you to do is continue to pray and to seek God. You can continue to watch our videos on uh, youtube.com, which we have many videos. You can listen to us on uh, spreaker.com under our, our church, Abundant Grace Church, or my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. You can watch our videos or listen to our radio broadcast on Ustream.tv. Just put my name in there, Abundant Grace Church. Or just plainly Google us under Abundant Grace Church or my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today. Our message title has been Quiet Time with God from Psalm 46. We cover verses 1 and 2. And this is part. God bless you, my beloved. And remember that this coming Sunday is Easter Sunday or Resurrection Day. Please honor God in the name of Jesus Christ. 
for what he did for the salvation of all mankind. Thank you. I'm Bishop Ramon DeMarie. I'm the pastor of Abundant Grace Church. Go with God.